what are the bugs or what are the errors that we can face as per the what perception of end user tester will going to do that testing manual process will going to be tested automatically and that will going to improve the efficiency of a software when the time is less at that time we have to go with this automation testing instead of manual in order to do this automation testing we require one computer programming language and also along with that we required an automatic software applications everybody a warm welcome to one and all welcome back to the session 4 of unit 4 and we are in the bca 6 semester subject called software engineering i am rohini ts department of computer science vidyashram first grade college the temple of excellence mysuru so before getting into our today session we'll just have a quick recap of my previous session as we all discussed in the last session of this unit we started with the software testing methods under that we have three types that includes black box testing and also we have a white box testing along with a gray box testing as we all know that this black box testing they they don't know how it is working internally so their main concern is regarding what how the user interface is working that is what black box in the white box this is also considered as transparent testing or uh, it is also considered as glass box testing so in that they will main concern is regarding internal working of an application or a software in this gray box it is in between black box as well as in the white box so that is what in this gray box test testing they don't have access to source code but they know how it is working and they must have that knowledge of internal technology or uh, internal logic of an application along with that they are going to have a uh, accessibility to the design data document that is in the gray box along with that i have discussed regarding the comparison between those three types of methods which we have with respect to the software testing so after this in our today session we'll going to see what are the types of software testing we have so you all needs to be very conscious when you are learning about types methods and all its classification there is a difference here that's what so in this types of software testing it can be manually done that is what manual testing if you are using some automation tool in order to do the testing that is what automation testing and also we'll see what are the tools we are going to use in order to have this software testing and also at last we'll see what do you mean by boundary testing let me get into the session that is with respect to types of software testing so based on the software testing life cycle or what the software development life cycle there we have to go with several number of phases or several number of levels amongst that we also have a testing as one part or a phase right so that can be either manual testing or it can be automation testing so in that first one is regarding manual testing as the name indicates if you just read this manual testing you will be able to understand so here they are checking the source code they are checking the scripts they are planning for the test cases but they are not using any of the automation tool so when it is done by the testing team manually then we are going to call that type of testing as what manual testing so here manual testing includes testing a software manually so they are not taking any of the help from any automation tool but they are doing it manually that is without using any automated tool or any script so they are not using any of the script or a tool in order to test the software scenarios and also the tester takes over the role of an end user so your tester is only acting as a end user itself so being a end user what we are going to expect from the software so that means ui needs to be very well and it needs to be user friendly attractive and uh, i compatible that and all the things we are all going to expect in the perspective of this end user the tester itself will going to test the software and also test the software to identify any unexpected behavior or bug so whenever we are started using any of the application or a software what are the bugs or what are the errors that we can face as per the what perception of end user tester will going to do that testing 
So in this manual testing, it can be what? Either in unit testing, integration testing or even system testing and user acceptance testing. You can see here, already we know what is unit testing, what is uh, integration system as well as user acceptance testing. All kind of testing will going to be done manually by the tester that too in the terms or uh, in the perception of end user. This is regarding manual testing. So here, testers use test plans, test cases or test scenarios to test the software to ensure the completeness of a testing. So here with the help of this test plans as well as the test cases and with the test scenario with the help of all these tester will going to test the ability or completeness and uh, correctness of a software in the manual testing and also mainly this include exploratory testing as testers explore the software to identify the errors in it. It's also considered as what exploratory testing. So why? Because we are exploring the bugs or errors whatever we can face when we start using this type of application or a software. So this is how manual testing will going to takes place. So just opposite to that we have a automation testing and also it is considered as what test automation. So in this with the help of some automatic testing tool or scripts they are going to do the testing. So whatever we have done manually in order to check the correctness of that we have to use this automation testing or test automation. So when the tester writes the script and uses another software to test the product. So here they are checking for the correctness, they are going to write the script. So whether the script is right or not, whether it is going to satisfy the requirements of a customer or not, will going to be checked against or with the help of this software automation testing tool. That kind of testing we are going to call as a automation testing or a test automation. And also this process involves automation of a manual process. So what we are doing? instead of doing it manually, we are using some of the automation tool. That's why it is considered as what? Automation of a manual process. Whatever the things or processing that we are doing manually, that will going to be converted into automated one. So that it is used to rerun the test scenarios that were performed manually quickly and repeatedly. So whatever the testing which has been done manually. So the same thing will going to be rerun in order to test the scenario. If you are doing so, it will be quickly done and it is need to be repeatedly. We can do the same uh, type of testing more than one time. So this is what automation testing and also here you can see that we have a test script and also we have a test execution test automation. This will going to be repeated in nature. So if you wanted to have the testing of one more scenario, you can do it. You can take the test plan with the help of the written script. It will going to be converted or it will going to be tested with the help of automation tools. And also already we know about the regression testing, right? So when we are making some changes to the software or an application, at the time we need to check Oh, the correctness of a software, whether it is affecting the content of another module or a component, whether it is getting affected after the changes, that we needs to be satisfied in the regression testing. So this automation testing is also used to test the application from the load. When we are loading an application in order to check the performance once it got implemented or deployed in order to check the performance and what is the stress point where the potentiality needs to be very high that needs to be checked here. So mainly this increases the test coverage. So these are all somehow usage or advantages of having this automation testing. So here mainly it will going to improve the test coverage. So for example if it is uh, needs to be done manually it may take more time. But if it is taking only lesser than a minute in order to test five test scenarios, then we have to go with the automation testing itself. So it is also going to be what more efficient than the manual testing. Coverage of a test will going to be high. Along with that, it improves the accuracy. Accuracy will be more, correctness will be more. So in order to improve that accuracy, it would be better if you are going with automation testing instead of manual testing. And also it will save the time. So if a person is doing a same work repeatedly sometimes they may get bored but if it is done by the computer or by any automation tool it will be non-stop that is what it saves the time and money so instead of paying a wages for the labor or for the testing team you can have an automation tool 
so you that is like what a one time investment that is also going to help in order to save the money in comparison to the manual testing so these are all you can consider this as an advantages of this automation testing advantages of automation testing fine this is what you can see here then what to automate so you we have a lot uh, large number of scenarios we have test scenarios and uh, uh, different modules is there then what to automate and when to automate how to automate that and all we must be know that to being a tester so here somehow it is not possible to automate all the things whatever we have in a software which we are using more frequently whether it is login or whether it is uh, registration so all those modules which uh, that we are going to use frequently right if you consider any of the social media account or if you consider any of the application the main thing is what two modules so there they will ask for the registration and they will ask for the login that means login as well as sign in that is all uh, somehow repeated tasks we are doing it again and again so instead of checking it manually if we make that two modules as automated one then it would be easy in order to test the scenarios or in order to match between the password along with a login id so if it is not matching then the test case will be fail so then what are the things which needs to be taken place that has to take so here the areas at which a user make a transaction such as login form or registration form or any area where large number of user can access the software simultaneously should be automated so we must be able to know how when to automate what to automate and why to automate right so here we can't automate every content of a software but when we are using it frequently it can be login or a registration form so when the user interaction is more when they are using it more repeatedly that kind of software element needs to be automated and also all the gi items that means in order to validate if i am clicking on the submit button whether it is taking a submission or not so if you are giving a reset whether it is resetting all the documents all the content whichever we have filled in a document that and all needs to be considered so gi ui items and also connections with a database manually we can't do it again and again so once we've written a query for that once we given a script for that based on that automation will going to takes place and field validation for example if they are giving a age restriction as 18 so in order to fill that application if their age is lesser than 18 that should not take and uh, if they have mentioned the data or type of the data in the numbers for example in the mobile number field so we can't give a character so there we have to fill number itself in order to do that field validation that needs to be automated and also uh, we can be efficiently tested by the automating manual process that manual process will going to be tested automatically and that will going to improve the efficiency of a software so now we got to know that what to automate that means when it is necessary to do the automation so now we'll see when to automate on what situation we have to incorporate this automation testing in our software or an application so when the large and critical project when we are dealing with the large and critical project at the time automation should be included there and project that require testing the same areas frequently so when the frequency of using of that application or an area our test scenario is more then we have to use this automated testing and requirements not changing frequently when it is static and uh, when it is not so dynamic in nature at the time we have to go with this automation testing and accessing the application for load and performance with many virtual users so if you are doing a same thing loading and uh, performance checking the performance of an application with multiple user then we have to go with this automation testing when the stable software with respect to the manual testing along with that availability of the time so when the time is less at that time we have to go with this automation testing instead of manual so we got to know what to automate when to automate next how to automate how we are going to incorporate this automation in our testing so automation is done by using a supportive computer language like vb scripting and automated software application so in order to 
do this automation testing we require one computer programming language and also along with that we required an automatic software application so with the help of these two we can have this automation testing and also we have several tools in order to uh, write the automation script so this script will going to validate everything whatever we wanted to check the test scenarios so here you can see that the process that can be used to automate the testing process in order to have this automation testing we have to follow these kind of uh, steps or uh, stages first we need to identify the areas within a software for the automation you just imagine here we have a software and we have a multiple number of modules in it fine first i need to identify the areas within a software for the automation you just imagine i wanted to automate these two areas or a scenarios then selection of appropriate tool for test automation so we have several tools for the automation out of that i'm going to take some of the testing tool in order to what incorporate testing for the specified area within the software then writing this test script so for this we are going to after choosing of a tool i'm just going to write the test script in order to make it automate and development of the test suite so after the test script has been done they are going to do the development of that test script after that execution of a script so whatever the script that we have written that will going to be executed after that create result reports so after the script has written or executed we are going to get the resultant of this reports after that identify any potential bug or performance issues so if you are facing any of the issues or if you are facing any of the bugs in the reports of a result reports that needs to be checked against this test script this is how the process of automation will going to takes place fine so here first identify the area then select one tool then write the test script after that development the test suit then execute that uh, script whatever has been tested written and uh, we have to create a reports after that reports we have to check whether do we have any bugs or errors in that along with that we need to check out the performance of that issues so this is what uh, how to automate then what are the tools we have in order to do this automation testing already we have mentioned here right we need to select any one of the testing tool so here i have listed out some of the test tool in order to do the automation that includes hp quick test professional and we have a selenium very very important and most commonly used tool in order to do this automation testing and also we have a ibm rational functional tester and we have a silk test then test complete testing anywhere win runner load runner visual studio test professional and we have a wa tir so all these can be asked for two marks right or mention the testing tools or write any two testing tools you should not uh, forget all these kind of test tools which is available in order to have this automation testing fine so next we'll see about the next type of testing that is regarding boundary testing so we have a automated testing and manual testing so that is what types of testing so after that we'll see about this boundary testing as the name indicate boundary in the sense what there is some limits right we have to minimize the limit and we have to maximize the limit within that whatever we are getting that is within the range that is also one of the kind of testing so here boundary value analysis is a type of black box or specification based testing technique this boundary testing comes under black box or specification based testing remember this is also b this is also b boundary testing comes under black box testing in which tests are performed using the boundary values so they are going to set some limit so which is the minimum value and which is the maximum value so within that whatever the test scenarios or test cases test suits are coming then it will be considered as what validated one right so for example pass boundary at 50% consider we have a total of 100% so if they are reaching 50% they are pass then in order to consider the merit then it will be of 75% if it is distinction then it will be of 85% how we are going to get to know the range if it is between 50 to 75 then it will be merit then when it is 
exactly at 50 or up to 50 at the time that is pass. So if it is 75 to 84 then it will be distinction. So here you can see that even if it is 49.50 for false, 74, 75 for merits, 84, 85 for distinction. So if you are reaching these ranges then we are having this valid boundary values for this scenario. That is what we are checking whether they are at the pass or at the merit or at the uh, distinction stage. So, if they are having 49.50, just we are taking the previous value than the maximum value here. So, boundary values are validated against both the valid boundaries and invalid boundaries. Remember, here we have a both valid boundary as well as invalid boundary. As I told, this specifies the minimum value for the boundary and maximum value for the boundary, which lies in between will be what uh, tested okay in order to have that value in this. So, here invalid boundary cases for the above example can be given as follows. So, here what? 0 will be for lower limit boundary value that can't be considered and it has to start from 1 to 100. Even if it is what uh, increasing the range above the 100 that will be 101 that is for upper limit boundary. If it is lesser than 1 greater than 100 then that can't be considered. So it will be lower bound this will be upper bound. So in between 1 to 100 whatever the values which comes that comes under that pass merit as well as distinction. So this is how this boundary testing will going to work out. That means we have to find the lower limit and upper limit that should not be considered which comes in between the range or between the boundary only those value can be considered as what validated values. This is regarding today's session along with the types of software testing. In our coming session we will going to see about the structural software testing and also we will see what are the types we have in that along with the advantages and disadvantages and here also in order to have the structural testing we have some of the tools that I will be discussing in my coming session. Let me meet in the next session. Until that keep learning, keep on growing. Thank you.